Banana is the most popular fruit in the world, or rather it's a berry. 90% of bananas in Ukraine are bananas just from Ecuador. 30 years ago, bananas were an exotic delicacy for you and me. But now it's familiar product all year round in any grocery store. But the information about the chemicals in bananas is increasingly popping up in the news. Media reports about poisoning, illness, and even death caused by pesticides among banana plantation workers. Today we have to figure out whether Ecuadorian bananas are useful or dangerous and whether we can eat them. The World Inside Out with Metro Camaro, Ecuador. To find out the whole truth about Ecuadorian bananas, we need a person who is familiar with the process from the inside. Hello. Good afternoon. Metro. Nice to meet you, Edward Weiss. A new Ukrainian. Yes, a Ukrainian with an English name from Donetsk. I live in Ecuador. Yes, we found our countryman who is personally responsible for the banana quality. Only after his final yes can the banana container sent from Ecuador just to our native port of Odessa. Well, my friends, our banana investigation begins in the Banana Republic of Ecuador. Together with Edward, our Ukrainian fellow, it's important to understand that there are two links in the banana business, those who grow bananas and those who bring them to us. Edward works for a company that buys bananas from farmers and delivers them to us. This is a third of all bananas in Ukraine. Edwards is the head of the Quality Control Department. Every day he inspects banana plantations, harvested crops and containers. The scale is simply incredible. We're driving and driving and driving. Bananas, bananas and bananas again. It feels like they never end. There are hundreds of manufacturers here and it just looked like a notion of bananas. By the way, they say that there are banana tycoons and banana people can earn millions of dollars. Is it true? Sure millions or tens of millions, but you can't tell that by their appearance. They hide it. If you meet a planter, he will be wearing dowdy clothes and driving an old, old jeep. You will see that. But why? Because they themselves have to work around the clock on their plantation. So they don't really worry about their clothes and vehicles. Here we are, approaching a plantation. We want to see the real picture, so we will check the plantation secretly without warning the order. It's the secret mission. Let's get the engine works, for we could run away and back quickly. So, the things here make you want to run away? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. that's it, my friends. Banana growers don't like other people sticking their noses in their business without asking. So, what will happen? Well, ten years ago, people here used to get killed on the plantations. Do you work with this plantation? No, it's a new one, and I really need to check it. So, they offered you. Yes. That's it. Before even starting a conversation about buying bananas, Edward prefers to check the state of the plantation. Well, for me, it's just a usual plantation. Bananas are bananas. But the expert immediately notices the flows. If you see the plantation is very light, there are large gaps, I can tell you that's a bad plantation. A healthy banana plant should leave at least five or six large leaves. Then the plantation looks thicker and greener. There are only three leaves, so all the processes such as photosynthesis or metabolism are no longer okay. It's a rule. The yell drops, and the fruit itself is formed incorrectly. This fruit will rot in a week or two. And you can see, these are wood lies. Here they are running. These pests not only live on the plant, but lay their larvae on the fruit. Then bananas begin to rot. 
If they find this little white dot in a box, they threw out a hundred boxes. If they find it in three boxes, they threw away the entire container. A container is 1,200 boxes. Edward notices an even more serious flow. Look, guys, black cigatoka. If the leaf is black here, this green part no longer works, and in a week or two, this leaf will die. But there are bananas. May I tear the package? Yes, of course. It's already... It's trash. I pick one. And I hand it to an expert. What can he say? The leaf is spoiled, but the bananas are ordinary. That's a problem. Because a banana won't tell you if the plantation is good or bad. Black cigatoka is a fungal disease that spreads very quickly and can destroy an entire plantation in a short time. It's very dangerous. Why? Because the plantation was very poorly cultivated. The farmer has to thread the fields with the very same pesticides. They are chemicals that are used to control pests and plant diseases around the world. To cover a large banana plantation, pesticides are sprayed from the air. This process is called fumigation. Unfortunately, not only plants but also workers fall under the treatment. Fertilizers and chemicals are used in agriculture all over the world. A simple example, we grow potatoes, the beetle needs to be poisoned, and sure, we use chemicals, but is it dangerous when sprayed with pesticides? They process it when there are no people on the plantation. They usually put out their signs during the fumigation, so you can't enter the plantation or fish in the river or hunt. You can't even swim in the river. And what about those small plantations where people live? I don't rule out such cases that someone can get hurt. To figure out the process and how dangerous the pesticides are, we go to the agriculture aircraft base. This man's life has totally changed because of pesticides. Meet Jorge Acosta. He was a pilot and every day he sprayed several tons of toxic substances. It's a plane for that. Here is a 750 liter pesticide tank. And from here, the chemicals are sprayed. I worked on this for 18 years. So tell us, please, why did you quit this job? In 2009, my heart rate became too high, my vision was worsening, and when I went to the doctors, it turned out that these were symptoms of chemical poisoning. These pesticides here, tell us please, why are they really dangerous? They can cause diseases of the liver and other important organs. Parkinson's disease and the worst of all, cancer. So you left because the health problems. My health only partly influenced the decision. I realized that for many years I had poisoned other people. Sprayed from an airplane, chemicals fall not only on bananas, but also on everything around. I realized it too late. I can show you everything. Let's go. We take a larger plane, because usually they have one seat only for the pilot. Now Jorge will fly it over the plantations exactly the same as he did it before. We can see where the plane flies and where dangerous chemicals end up. Approaching the banana plantation, the houses are next to the plantations or are located directly on them. To cover the entire plantation, pilots turn on the sprayer while still on the approach, and sometimes they turn it off later. So it's impossible that the chemicals won't get on the houses. When it's windy, small particles are spread throughout the district. It's obvious from the air, even if spraying is carried out when there's no one on the plantation, it will end up in rivers and people drink this water, which is also very, very harmful.
Jorge organized a plantation workers' union. He's trying to achieve safe conditions and compliance with the rules for the use of pesticides. Did any of your colleagues suffer? Yes. Inhalation of pesticides causes drowsiness. I know it for myself. I think that's why a lot of pilots get crashed. It was hard to believe what I heard, but after checking the local reports, there was no doubt. Planes that spray chemicals crash suspiciously often here. In 2009, when we first discovered this problem, seven planes got crashed. It's crazy. In one year. And this year, there were four crashes already. The latest one is quite recent. So you think that even despite the drops fly towards the tail quickly, something reaches the cabin, probably any smells. We did an experiment. We poured the fluorescent liquid into the tank and flew with spraying. When the plane landed, the pilot had traces of fluid all over his body. You're fighting against that all. So, how come you are here? You are still allowed to fly. Are these old connections of yours? Yes. I worked here for many years and everyone knows me. I protect the rights of all people who work here. Thanks to Jorge's old connections, we got a unique opportunity to film the process of spraying chemicals. So, here we are, the same plane that pours chemistry on bananas. It's only due to their respect for Jorge, they allow us to do this. We'll show you how it goes. The guys who prepare the plane are wearing masks and gloves. Hello. Hello. Will you be pouring the pesticides? Sorry, no comment. Just after we fixed the cameras on the plane, the flight was suddenly banned. Oh, my friend, suddenly, what happened? You came here and they paid attention to us. The Flight Safety Commission has unexpectedly raided the airline office. And now, during the inspection, all flights have been banned. This inspection seems to be really long. Can you imagine how it all happened by chance? By chance. The plane was ready for takeoff. And they saw us. And then a state commission appeared and bombed the flight, because we're filming with cameras. I guess this is just confirmation that everything is suspicious here. Although we are not going to stop, we asked Jorge for a meeting with the workers who can confirm that people are suffering from chemical spraying here. The number of those who came is astounding. Good afternoon, folks. Good afternoon. First, thank you very much from all Ukrainians, because 90% of all bananas in my country come from Ecuador. I mean, these are bananas that are harvested by you, and thank you so much. But we are also worried about our health. We heard about the pesticides problem, and I want to ask you directly, how serious is this problem? You know it for sure. I worked for a year where I was sprayed with pesticides and I got health problems. I passed the test. There are toxins in my blood. And when did the chemicals get in you? Right at work. Yes, because I walked in a t-shirt and short pants. They didn't give me any protection. But many plantations report this all untrue. There are no people on the plantations where the plane sprays chemicals. Processing should take place on weekend. But a lot of people just work on weekend. May I ask you to raise their hands if you suffer of that? Just raise your hands, please. Look, mutual response. Can you imagine for us to have bananas, they have to walk in chemical rain? I didn't think it was so scary and awful that it's impossible to grow bananas without pesticides, but it's necessary to avoid harming either the workers or those who will eat those bananas. Chemicals are dangerous, but it's impossible to do without them. We've seen an under-cultivated banana plantation. That's why everything that grows in the world on an industrial scale 
Even apples or potatoes is certainly processed. The manufacturers have to balance in a very delicate situation to use chemistry exactly as often as necessary, but not a drop more. If processing is done according to technology, then the workers won't suffer and the harvest will be safe. We go to another plantation, which Edward already inspected last week. But today, the expert is obliged to control everything related to the chemistry. We meet the owner of the plantation. This year, I ordered the processing 14 times, of 21 times when it's allowed. But we're interested in other figures. Any fruit is safe if enough time has passed from the last treatment to harvest, so pesticides are washed off by rains. The plant also has time to remove the chemical through metabolism. The last treatment was 70 days ago. It's a lot. The rains washed away this chemistry a long time ago. It's just perfect. Data on the use of chemicals are supported by documents, and the experts check it out attentively. I care because children eat bananas, so it's important to know whether they're safe or not. I can guarantee my bananas are chemical-free, so you can feed your children. Please do. The appearance of the plants and the long interval between treatments indicate that these plantation bananas are grown correctly. They can be approved for shipping. Look, it's cool. The production goes along the conveyor. Be careful. Latex is like banana blood. It's transparent, but getting dry, it becomes black. Latex is called banana juice here. Nothing can wash it off except bleach, so my colleagues and I always wear white T-shirts. Look, the guy is not dirty. It's all latex on his clothes. How large is your plantation? 45 hectares. Is it a lot or little? Just medium. I are taken by local standards? No, a middle class. We got someone to check the information, just our agent. How many hectares do banana tycoons start with? 150 or 200? So 45 hectares is just a millionaire. Yes, that's right. Look, all these banana branches are always wrapped in bags. It's to prevent damage from birds, bugs, and also wind. So even though its peel is quite thick, a banana is tender. Yes, it's a very tender fruit, a berry. A slightest scratch causes dreadful black spots, so it must be groomed and cherished. Here I found a bunch. Now we'll show why bananas are so tender. A leaf falls and touches a banana. One, two, three. We can already see some small scratches here. Now, what are these pads for? Look, if a banana rubs against a banana, when they carry it, it's already visible, the pill is damaging. What will happen next in this place? In a couple of hours, it will turn black. Let's save it and check. Okay. Good afternoon, what's your name, please? Juan Carrea. How much does it weigh? About 50 kilograms. It's for two boxes of bananas. He must carry it from there to this line and hang it on the hook. But 50 kilos are heavy. How many bundles do you carry in a day? About 140. Seven tons per day? Yeah, something like that. Sorry, but what is your salary, please? I got $20 a day. Well, it's minimal from 20 to 35 or 40 dollars. Depends on they just pull the load or pick off the leaves or cut bananas beautifully. So a good worker has $400 a month or more. Yes, that's right. Okay. In the world inside out habit, I can experience a new profession. And these bananas will soon go across the ocean to our country, to Odessa. Teach me how to do it. You put it on your shoulder, and when the bunch is close, carefully place it on the mattress. The mattress is really is very soft. It's actually a pillow. They cut it slightly so the trunk leans. Get the pillow ready. Help me. 
Help us, help us. You make half a million dollars a year. Help us a little. Come on. Oops, drip and juice. Give me your hand, please. Well, we forced the banana tycoons to work. Turn right now. I can see anything. Step it over. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> now you see, the work is difficult. I chipped over the branch. Just imagine, a hundred bundles a day. These men are heroes. It's hard. Try to take a bag of sugar or flour and carry it. You can drop the sack any time and take a break, but with standard fruits, that's not possible. The slightest blow and bananas are sent to the trash. <laughs> Thank God the workers realized that I had no experience, as well as the control chief. You can control the quality, but it's hard to carry, right? Yeah. Here, they help us and carry the devices. There are even bigger branches. They gave you an average branch. Frankly, they gave it to us, and we dropped it together, yes. The quality controller and the journalist are no longer wearing white. Now we lock it with a chain. Here, my friends, the very bananas that will be on the shelves in our supermarkets in about a month. They grin. They say, people cut bananas when they green, so they ripen in a container. But those people eat fresh bananas. Bananas are cut green for everybody. Why do they cut them green? Because they don't ripen evenly. If you let bananas ripen on the plant, some of them will become overripen and spoiled. Some will still be green. So old bananas are cut earlier. So they ripen on their way to the consumer. The temperature in the shipping containers is at least 13 degrees Celsius. The same temperature must be observed by the buyers. I always advise my friends to put bananas in a warm, dry place, not a refrigerator, because then bananas get frostbite and turn black. So, my friends, we don't store bananas in the refrigerator, never. What's next? Conveyors are not automatic here, my friends. You have to push it by hand. But it's not easy when there are 50 bunches. A whole train of bananas. A rope loop made from a bag. It goes well. That's it. It's hard to go uphill. And this is two and a half tons of bananas for our native Ukrainian market. This is how bananas get to us. Last steps. Oh, now they need to slow down. Holy mackerel. I overdid it. They really flew into the shop. But the shop workers don't hurry up to get my bananas. It was their legal lunch time. Buenos dias. So inspectors and owners have lunch with the workers? Sure, they always do. It's very democratic. So what banana workers and banana kings have for lunch? Soup. Fried bananas, of course. Fried chicken, rice. What's that? It's a tuna salad with tomatoes and potatoes. It's a rich dinner. Do you feel employees at your own expense? Yes, mornings and afternoons. So, my friends, free breakfast and free lunch. Thank you. Excuse me, may I ask you, what's your name, please? Fernando. Is the quality of food like this here every day? Yes, of course. And the owner also eats with you or just for cameras? If he is here, he eats with us. How many plantations have the food like this? The lunches are everywhere, but only some have such great food. After the lunch, we returned to work and met Edward's subordinates who were inspecting the plantation. 
What's your name, please? Oscar Delgado. What's your part of control? The size and quality of the fruit. He has two main tools. This is our calibrator. By standards, the fruit must be at least 14 centimeters long and 3 centimeters in diameter. And the knife? It's not a knife, it's a curvo. Sorry? Curvo. Curvo. It means twisted. Any banana man will tell you that your wife has a knife at home and I have a curvo. Checking the bananas if there's no disease, no damage. For example, this one has already suffered in the field. And that's what we talked about. Look, someone scratched it. Maybe I did. I touched the trees, you saw it. Oh my God, help me. Damages appear. It will rot contact with its neighbors, and they all will rot. Mostly, yes. If he sees some illness or damage, he marks it. No case will this banana get into the box. Can I check the bananas for a death, sir? Here, I guess. Right? No, it's dirt. Ah, I found it. Look, this is what rots, right? It's not really bad. It won't be as pretty as you'd like. I'm ruining it. That's not all. One finger is cut off, so it's called finger. Yeah, it's cut in half to check the inside. It should be white and firm. So banana is healthy and will reach Ukraine in good condition. Sticky glue. Disgusting. Bitter. Oh. After the bananas have got this test, they are sent to the washer. All bananas undergo their rinsing. Surface dirt is knocked off. Our branch is divided into bunches. Then they are thrown into the pool. They float here in bushes. Why? To remove all the garbage and some chemical. Also, the latex to come out. Look, those guys remove the plastic and knock down the brushes with a special knife and throw them into the pool. May I try, please? It's not so easy. Look, its diameter and bend resemble this trunk, so it's very convenient to cut it. Look what I did. Lack of experience. I cut one banana, and it's definitely going to be sorted out. I'm sorry. It's easy to damage. Ah, uh, I ruined two bananas. Boss, will you find me? Yes, I will. For all the bananas you damaged, if my people worked the way you do, we would be collecting one container for two weeks. Odessa will be left without bananas. The third stage, only beautiful fingers are caught and selected here. If he finds the damaged ones, he throws them away. We cut six bananas and make a square-shaped crown. So it's called the crown. Okay. Just a little. No. Right here. Here it is. Up. The cutter only does three cuts. One, two, three. Does it also affect the preservation? The right cut ensures that the bananas don't rot and reach the buyer in good condition. And here are bananas from the branch you dropped. Really? Did you know? It's a fine. What should I do? Look, one, two, three, four. No, you throw these away. As a dummy, I'd sort the bananas like this. I would cut off the damaged ones here, and these four are intact. Can you do that? The bananas will be damaged for packing. Because I cut one row of bananas, the bunch is a non started shape, and now it will be impossible to put it tightly in the box. It will dangle and damage half of the crate. Lovely bananas, but the top layer was scratched. We throw it away. And what's here? The fourth stage of quality. If we assume that someone overlooked a scratch on the first three, sooner or later they should find it. That's right. So now bananas are sorted by size, weight, and prepared for packaging. Since childhood, I have always believed this sticker the most. It was even a pity to throw it away because bananas were in short supply. I saved it and stuck somewhere. At school, we also boasted if we had such stickers. Some people stuck different brands to their wallpaper, like a collection. I see a girl doing something with her brush. I threw the crown with a special remedy. The crown is essentially an open wound. A brush is used to avoid rotting. What is it made of? It's a special acid that heals the crown. 
Okay, and what is it? The same as before? But the whole banana is covered if there are scratches of the banana to prevent them from rotting to you. Before packing, bananas are also treated with special remedies. That's why it's better to wash the fruits before eating and never eat the peel. This is how bananas are stacked. This is the final fifth stage of banana quality control. When Edward makes sure that the entire batch has good quality, he lets send the container. Here it is, imported in Ukraine, Odessa region. It's amazing. I can't believe that this box is going to my country. Ukraine, greet them! The big container is almost full. Here I should ask. You can see regular reports that in Odessa, in a container with bananas, police found cocaine. The customs office reports it often. So, do you know anything about it? Does it really happen? After Colombia began to change its drug traffic from land borders to the sea, this became a big problem. And for me, it's a nightmare, because the Ecuador law says if at least one gram of something is found in a container, I will go to jail, even if it's not my fault. Where do they usually hide it? Mostly, it's the floors and walls, and here in Ecuador they find two, three or four tons in a container. Bananas are in the boxes, and two or three tons of cocaine are hidden in the insulation. How can you check it? Before picking up a container, we gather inspection, when each container has its own GPS sensors. We can control that it didn't stop anywhere even for an hour. God forbid, no powder, never, only bananas. There are three boxes left. I suggest upload it and send it them. Let's do it together. Okay. Yes. The container is sealed properly, and they will open it already in Odessa. The bananas will ripen and turn yellow. Well, bananas are leaving for the port. They will sail for about a month and then get to our stores in Ukraine. While the best bananas have gone to my country, the bananas rejected at various stages of control remain here in Ecuador. They go to the domestic market. Usually the farmers sell it to the north of the country and the mountains. Or for the animals, if it's really bad. Do you remember our experiment? That will happen to bananas scratched by a leaf rubbed against each other. So, here you are. What do we have now? In an hour and a half, it turns black, so it can be assumed that in a month they will arrive rotten in Odessa. Exactly. Such a strict inspection allows us to buy good quality bananas. Only thanks to people like Edward, we can eat bananas without fear and get a healthy product that is cheaper than our native apples in winter. Now, as usual, we had to ask our new friend if we could visit him at home. And sure, we couldn't come empty-handed. Good evening. Good evening. Well, first, I'd like to see how an Ukrainian man lives in Ecuador. Everything is so stylish and modern. His kitchen and equipment. How much is the rent per month? $350 with security cameras and stuff like that. And in a good district, the head of the city police lives across the street, so you don't worry about security. It's just a tradition for us to look into the fridge. May I? You may. It's empty. This is a bachelor's apartment. Definitely. You need some Ukrainian food. Here are cucumbers, tomatoes, Transcarpathian sausage. Evening Kiev chocolates, vodka, buckwheat. Buckwheat is always a short supply. Fresh rye bread and, of course, foreign egg mud. It's really straight from my heart. It's in short supply here. Short supply is when there is not enough. And it doesn't exist here. Thank you very much. Edward prepared for us visit too. He cooks borscht for us with a local twist. Ukrainian borscht in Ecuadorian style. For the first time, instead of potatoes, we use plantain. Plantain is a vegetable type of banana. You don't eat them raw, only cooked. Just like our potatoes. It looks like an ordinary banana. But the similarity ends on the outside. 
<laughs> Do you have a trash can? <laughs> Spit it. <laughs> it's just such an astringent taste. Wait, first we need to boil it in water. Now you know, not everything that looks like a banana is actually a banana. These big green ones are plantain. It's a banana-shaped potato. Plantain is boiled. Then we put it into the borscht. When everything is ready, we set the table. For the first time in history, let's try borscht with bananas. With plantain, to be exact. The borscht itself is excellent. And now the very banana. Believe it or not, it's just potato. No sweetness, same consistency, same taste. Frankly, I was worried, but it's hard to ruin our borscht. A banana won't ruin it. A toast for your pork. Thanks to you, Ukrainians can eat bananas, both in winter and summer. It's just because of you. Bananas are the symbol of Ecuador, but there is also an official landmark. After in the country even got its name. We're in 20 kilometers from Quito, the capital, and this monument is called the center of the world because the equator line passes here. Here it is. That's why the country was named so. In Spanish, equator means Ecuador. Equator is an invisible line more than 40,000 kilometers long, which divides our planet into northern and southern hemispheres. It passes by land through 11 countries and through the waters of eight more states. But for Ecuador, it's the main symbol and pride of the country. In 1736, the world learned that the equator line passes over Ecuador thanks to the French geodesic mission. Scientists have noticed that here twice a year, on the days of the spring and autumn equinoxes, the sun is clearly at its zenith, and objects don't cast shadows. Twice a year on the, at the equator, the sun is located clearly at right angles to the surface on the Earth, so objects have no shadows for a short time. It's not such a day, and the time it's not noon. It's noon and 24 minutes. But the fact that we're in the equator is still visible. My shadow falls almost vertically under my feet. If you look closely at the surrounding objects and people, there are almost no shadows. This discovery was made right here. Now it's the center of the world. Ecuadorians marked the equator also by a majestic monument with a five-ton globe on the top. You can go inside and climb to the top. Although the calculation methods of the 18th century were not accurate enough. The modern navigation system says this monument is not quite in the center of the world and this line is not quite the equator. The equator is located to the north, 240 meters from here. But this monument remains the main attraction of the country. More than a million tourists come here every year. The calculation error doesn't bother tourists at all. The symbolism of this place allows to take pictures on two hemispheres of the planet. But where is the real equator? Let's figure it out. The world inside out always finds the truth. And today, a local man named Patricio helps us. This yellow line is symbolic. The real equator is not here at all. Where is it? Can you show me? Yes, of course. Let's go. This house is located on the equator, so you made the equator at home. There is a sundial in the yard, meridians and parallels, like you're in the open-air geography classroom at school. Come in. Here it is, the real equator. This is the zero parallel. Did you decide to open a tourist center here? Yes. We want to bring the truth to the people. Everyone knows about the center of the world, but this is a mistake. So my friends and I want to make this place famous. That's it, my friends. The man made the equator at home. How did you define at this GPS? 
Here's a picture that NASA took 25 years ago. Here's the monument. It's 249 meters and 60 centimeters further from the equator. The monument is on the yellow line, and we are on the blue one, on the real equator. Look. Now we can check it with a satellite navigator. Here you are, clearly zero. Equator, indeed, it's right here, in this room. Look at the Google map, the usual one. We put a point zero. It's almost 100%. Of course, if you move the phone a little, it will change, but it's here. The technology confirms, my friends, we check with different devices and everything matches. The equator line ended up in your house. Is this your private property? Yes, in 1994, I found out that my house is right on the equator. Ten meters of the equator belong to me. I think if you put this house up for sale, it could be millions of dollars. It's a piece of the equator. It should cost millions. It's expensive. Did someone offer you to sell this house? Not yet. But I often hear that this is a gold mine, and I hope that someday this place will turn a profit. But right now, it's important to show people where the equator really is. After all, if you have already arrived in the center of the world, get to the very center. That inspires me the most. That's it, friends. The man accidentally found the equator at home. He just lives in the equatorial house. The real inside always lies very close, a few steps from tourist sites. Close to the center of the world, you find yourself on the real equator. And the GPS confirms it, the navigation confirms it, even your mobile phone confirms it. So the world inside out recommend each of you turn a little away from the tourist trail and see the real life and the truth. The center of the world is always waiting for you. That small mistake doesn't prevent the center of the world monument from being a symbol of Ecuador. Here important official meetings and international events are held. To remember that the world inside out has a special tradition hoisting the Ukrainian flag in iconic places. And mountain peaks, and in particular on the equator, which we have already done in Kenya. Now it's time to do it here. Today the Ukrainian flag will be officially raised here. For this we received official permission in advance and agreed with the local administration. This is the colorful official delegation of Ecuador that is made in us. We represent the center of the world administration. Today we are authorized to hold a solemn raising of the flag. Dmitro Fernanda. I'm Tatiana. Tatiana, it's a Ukrainian name. And the embroidered shirt is similar to a Ukrainian one. Thank you very much. Hello, you man. Arturo. Arturo. And your costume. This is the traditional costume of Uma, the Andean devil. Devil? Is it a positive character? He personifies both good and evil. Uma the devil is an Ecuador legends creature important for the indigenous people. This character participates in all official events. His colleagues are also dressed in traditional costumes from different provinces of Ecuador. No Ukrainian delegation ever came here? We are meeting Ukrainians here for the first time, and it's a great honor for us. On this occasion, we decided to make the largest flag of Ukraine in the history of the world inside out. At the leadership of this place and city told me, I ordered a flag in a local workshop. It's three by six meters. Here it is. Who's in charge of the official ceremony here? I am. What do you know about Ukraine? To be honest, I don't know much. Ukraine is in the geographical center of Europe. This reminds me of your place. What do you call this place? Center of the world. From the center of Europe to the center of the world. 
Now, Tatiana will raise the flag of Ecuador, then the flag of Quito, the capital, and then the Ukrainian flag. The devil wasn't allowed to raise the flag of Ecuador. Every color of our flag has its meaning. Red is the blood shed for the freedom and independence. Blue is the color of the sea and the sky. And yellow is a symbol of the wealth that we have here. To the sound of the Ecuadorian anthem, the ceremony begins. That's it, friends. The national flag of Ecuador is officially raised to the national anthem of Ecuador. Let's now raise the flag of Quito, the capital of Ecuador. Hooray! Viva Quito! Well, now the most solemn moment for me and for all our audience. We unfold the Ukrainian flag. Help me, please. The top should be blue. Bottom is yellow. Okay. We start raising the flag of Ukraine to the anthem of Ukraine. Thank you so much. And how long will Ukrainian flag be here? It's for Ukrainian tourists. Your flag will be here for 15 or 20 days. In the future, when Ukrainian tourists come here, it can be raised again. You just need to contact us in advance, and the flag will already be raised. If you are going to Ecuador, contact the administration and ask them to put up a flag. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine, glory to Ecuador, glory to the city of Quito. A significant event, and now our expedition will unfold in a different way. Muchas gracias. The next season, we continue our adventures in the Andes. This has never happened before. We'll meet the folk superstar. Yes, it's hard to talk to celebrities. They're almost in the spotlight. The man who was given a monument during his lifetime. The Chimborazo Volcano is my grandfather, and I'm his grandson. With a very unusual celebrity profession. We change the camera for an axe. We have a hard job ahead of us. We'll put together a huge crew. A team of 45 people plus film crew, 18 doctors, police, lifeguards. A world record on a mountain said to be taller than Everest. We've never started such a large-scale expedition. We will have to negotiate with local officials. For some reason, we're asked to come to the president in the morning at 4 a.m. and arrange incredible night races. No explanation, just do as they say. The cars are ahead. They asked us to catch up. To see their rarest collectible heads worth $100,000 each. God, it's real. This is a human head and learn how to shrink a hat to the size of an apple. An incision is made around the neck. Here's the incision in the back. It is so scary. We will meet the most beautiful girls in the country. We help each other. We became close friends. We'll challenge stereotypes together with those who make the impossible things. I love to try and experience everything. We'll get to know a new bright country. There is always a holiday on the streets where creatures from the hell live. It's a nightmare. And legends about cruel drug lords come to life, where the big money is and treasures can be found right under your feet. Real adventures, real world inside out. The World Inside Out with Metro Camaro.